I'm happy that his family's able to be here and enjoy this night with him. If there's anybody that deserves to be in a Hall of Fame around here, as far as I'm concerned, it's Charlie Hesse. Uh, and I think that uh, all the ex-players and uh, that I see here would agree with me as far as that goes. Uh, he definitely made a big difference in uh, so many young people's lives and in a lot of older people's lives too, you know, uh, throughout the years. But I remember out there at Pioneer Stadium one night, uh, Stephenville came in, you know, and they won 32 games in a row. And I don't know how, I don't really know why, but our kids thought they could and we went in there and, and we beat them. And, you know, it, it kind of validated everything that Charlie had tried to create as far as just the culture of the kids around here. And you've passed your most difficult, dangerous test if the man in the glass is your friend. You might fool the whole world down a pathway of years and get pats on the back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you cheated the man in the glass. And that's Charlie Heston. There's so many people in this room I need to thank, all the guys, Jason and Blake and Bubba and Wes and, you know, all the, I don't know who else here might have played for me, but, I mean, it's just, the thing I've been successful in most of my life is I find enough good people to do good things and I've been able to take some credit for it. I mean, there's no better than Steve Wood, you know where he is right now. I mean. He couldn't, if he had all the state championship rings on, he couldn't have walked in and been bummed down. You know? But it's all about people, and it's all about family, and it's all about being the best that you can be all the time. But uh, because of Mr. Hackley and Susan and all of these athletes, you know, I was able to surround myself with the good people, and, and they were able to make me successful. One of the best things about Basel, and I bet it's still the same, is the parents. I mean, McCreary's right here, and, and all the parents that we had, and I remember that banquet that night, uh, that one in particular, they got old Toby Keith to let us use the song, uh, Should Have Been a Pioneer, and it, I still have my copy of it, and, and it's just a really neat, you know, uh, way they included all the kids' names in it, and, you know, uh, it's just the support at Basel at that time, and I know it's at Chisholm, and I know it's at Saginaw. You know, I just think it's something about this part of the world that's important. One of the reasons I wanted to come to here, we, at Graham, we played through scrimmage Basel. And a guy named Trey Woods, which has been inducted into this, into this group, uh, was a one-armed young man, and he was one of the best football players I'd ever coached against. And I thought, man, and all the kids were just like that. I thought they played hard and tried to do things right. And, uh, you know, I'd always try to make sure our kids did right. And when they did, I'd say something like, sweet. You know, that was one of my favorite times, sweet. You know, or, or, or that's good stuff. Right? <laughs> you know what I said? <laughs> but anyway, and, uh, probably different than any other head coach. Uh, my five minutes is up. You know, it's important that you know, uh, Tim, thank you for starting this group. You know, I was in athletic administration a long time myself, and you just feel like you don't have time. But to honor all the people, I was here when M.P. Copper's brother was inducted two or three years ago. And, uh, I mean, I wouldn't be here. How many of you guys are, Blake's inducted tonight, Bubba's in the group. You know, there's other players that pay, play for me that are already in the Hall of Honor. Well, that's why I'm here. It's got nothing to do with me. But the thing is, if you help enough other people get what they want in life, you'll get what you want in life. And that was my whole goal in coaching, to help these young guys grow up and be mature people and proud, productive citizens. Coaches I work with, Steve, everybody. Just important to me. And I thank all the people involved, and I want you to know that's a key. For all of you young people from the three schools, you know, Work hard, do things right, treat people like they're supposed to be treated. Thank you for this opportunity, and good luck next year. Our next inductee is Blake Mabry, and he'll be introduced by Bubba Corsi. Well, thank you. It is really great to see Coach Hesse and Coach Wood. It's really good to hear, hear from y'all. 
But uh, it is an honor and privilege to be here tonight introducing Blake Mabry to the Hall of Fame. Uh, I cannot be more proud and uh, excited for Blake and his family receiving this honor tonight. Uh, Blake had an amazing athletic high school career while at Boswell. Blake excelled at both football and baseball, where he led and heavily contributed to, to the uh, success of two of the greatest teams in Boswell history. The 96 11 and 1 football team and the 97 state champion baseball team. But although we are here tonight to recognize Blake's athletic achievements, I wanted to take the time to talk about the man Blake is. I have known Blake for 27 years. We first met in the sixth grade at Bryson Elementary. And in the 27 years I've known Blake, from the first sports team we were on together at PYA to the man you are today. I have never been around a more intense competitor. Your leadership abilities on and off the field were matched by none. The one word that comes to my mind when I think of you, Blake, is passion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Blake Mabry. Gosh dang, somebody put an onion on our table over there. I don't know what the heck's happening. Bubba. Thanks. Um, man, you, you hear Coach Hesse and Coach Wood and Gosh dang, Hartley, when you see Coach Wood get misty, it just kind of breaks things down for you. Um, hey, any, I want to thank the folks who put this together again, Coach Daughtry and, and all you folks for being here. Um, you students, thank you so much for, for serving. Uh, anytime we accomplish something great uh, and we're recognized, it, the, the only reason that happens is the grace of God and being surrounded by great people. I mean, that, that's it. Um, for, for me, I think this is especially true as a Boswell pioneer. Uh, I was on some great teams. You, you've already heard about some of those. Um, without the, the success that our teams enjoyed, I, I'm just another guy that comes through Boswell High School. Uh, as a pioneer, we had great times and, and truly some of the best memories that uh, of my life. More lessons than I could count, but I do believe that, that the greatest lessons we can learn are through experiences in sports. Uh, I believe that to be true. Discipline, team, sacrifice, being a part of something bigger than ourselves. Um, we learned leadership, how, how to be respected and not worry about being liked, um, how to lose, what it takes to win, uh, and how to win with class, uh, dealing with setbacks and things that, uh, that, that are not turning out like they're supposed to. Things become really clear the further away we get from them happening. Uh, we got to learn how to handle these moments and um, when we're in them so that when we look back we're able to see things more clearly. Uh, and we don't regret, regret excuse me, how we responded. Because how we respond is the only thing that we can control. If, if you look at the state of our nation and our world right now, um, we, we can get on social media or we can get somewhere and we can gripe and we can rant. Uh, or we can run our responses through the filter of our values and our convictions uh, and at least handle ourselves well. Uh, so as a Hall of Fame coach told me, we need to be first class and handle ourselves with class, whatever comes our way. I want, I want to talk to the student athletes that are here tonight, and again, thank you for being here. I, I hope that, uh, that all of you have a chance to get up here and be a Hall of Famer one day. I really do. Uh, so I want to say this to you. Pay the price in the classroom uh, and on the field or on the court. Develop as a whole person. Um, ask hard questions. Dig deep. Ask tough questions. Who's God? Who am I? Buy in. Uh, buy in to your coaches and to the program that they've established for you because it is for your success and so you can be successful. Um, know that you will not do it alone. No matter how good you are or good you think you are, you are not doing it alone and any success you have will be a reflection of the team that you are on. Thank people, don't step on them. Don't be afraid to step out and be a leader even if it means you may not be liked in the social scene. When, not if, you get knocked down, get back up again and again and again. I know in my career we experienced that, Bubba and Hartley and I talked about it tonight. Um, we talked about the Stephenville game, but uh, it wasn't too long before that that we ended another uh, streak that we aren't real proud of, but I will talk about it tonight. Uh, we ended a two-year losing streak for the Northside Steers, not just a year or so before that. Uh, and, and part of who we were as a team was getting knocked flat on our face. Uh, and actually being on the front page of the sports page that next morning is one of the more embarrassing things we ever did. And we just said that wasn't going to happen again. And then when we went and had a chance to end a two-year winning streak for another team, we said, you know what, we're going to try to make it on the front page of the paper for a different reason. 
So when you win, not if, you get knocked down, you hop right back up again and again and again. Um, Compete. Compete in everything you do. Passionately pursue getting better every day. Don't accept failure. Build on it. Learn from it. Lead yourself and others well and in a forward direction. And have fun. Your kids. Enjoy the ride because it will be gone before you know it. And I told some of you tonight, I feel like an old guy here with a white beard, but it will be gone before you know it and you'll be 20 years down the road. Um, To my kids. Your dad's up here receiving an honor that's more deserved by the people who prop me up and made me look good. Um, I hope and pray that when it's all said and done, you'll be able to look at me and uh, say that I bought into God's plan for our family uh, and led you well. That I loved your mother with everything I had and that you know beyond the shadow of a doubt I left it all on the field as your father. I tell you all the time, follow your Heavenly Father because I'm the one that's broken and messed up. So I hope ultimately you know Him, that you honor your mother, you lead yourselves and your teammates well, you put in the work, you pay the price, and you know that in whatever you accomplish, you'll always be the only one. <coughs> that onion's getting me again. The only ones. You will be the only ones in my Hall of Fame. I love you. I'm proud to be your dad. Thank you all for being here tonight, for listening to me blubber a little bit. I'm honored and humbled uh, to be standing here in the place where I am tonight. God bless you guys. Have a good evening. Okay, Blake, now the onions are staying here now. Uh, Our next inductee is Jody Moody, and he will be introduced by Andy Moody. Dad loves for sports were evident with his accomplishments. Uh, in football, basketball, baseball, and green track. Dad's accomplishments in football were varsity tight end, defensive end, and an honorable mention in 1963 as a sophomore. 1964, Dad was the second team varsity tight end and defensive end and was named BHS, our Boswell High School Booster Club Lineman of the Year. In 1965, his senior year, he accomplished second team varsity tight end and defensive end for the third year in a row and was Booster Club lineman for the second year in a row. <coughs> in 1965, Jody was the first team all district catcher and led the district for batting average and home runs in his first year of the baseball program. Uh, he backed this up again the second year as a senior. And Dad received baseball scholarships or offers from Cisco Junior College and Dallas Baptist. Swing hard, run fast, have fun. <laughs> wow, thank you. Um, hard to follow that. You know, I was wondering, uh, wasn't expecting that. Anyway, that, thanks to Kim and the staff, all of you down, y'all have done a fantastic job. Every year, it seems to get better and better. Uh, thanks to my family members for supporting me. And uh, no matter what I seem to mess up or what I do, uh, thanks Charlotte for being there with me. Uh, thanks to all my kids. And, you know, thanks to all my teammates that I've had throughout the years. Uh, Andy said something about fast pitch softball. I guess that was the last big sports event of my life. And uh, got a couple of the guys here. You got Rick Lansford here that I played with. And y'all had the, the what, Sand Crabs? Yes, sir. We played for a team called the Saginaw Sand Fleas. <laughs> 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 that was the first team we ever had that had uniforms. Jay Williams and Max Newcomb were my first high school coach. You know some of the, you hear about Max Newcomb being such a great basketball coach. 
many people didn't know he's probably one of the better at the time he was the best baseball coach we'd ever had of course it was the first year <laughs> <laughs> but max was a played semi-pro ball and he was a super coach uh, different kind of football back then than it, than it is now or even black play uh, Little bitty, little tiny school. We started out a B school when I was in junior high. We went to A school, and when I graduated, we were a two A school, which we thought that was pretty good going big. You know, back then we in the district with Lake Worth and Everland and uh, Dust. Those were big schools. Some of the training methods that we use we probably wouldn't be seen around sports right now. You know, you ran until you couldn't run anymore, and then you took a salt pepper, which wasn't very good. My doctor said, you got to be kidding me. And I said, well, you were there with me. <laughs> you, you took them also. So. Anyway, I've always loved sports. Still do, still play golf every chance I get. Can't do some of the things, but I'm, I'm loving watching my grandkids play. Uh, another lesson I learned, my, oh, he was 11, Parker at the time. He's, he's a really good golfer. He asked me to caddy for him. I didn't equate that to walking. I didn't at all, so when I finished, I had blisters and couldn't walk any further. I, I, I finally had to get my daughter to come here. You, you get the clubs. I'll sit in that car. With her. <laughs> love watching Boswell. I love watching Bartle. That's our new home. But I love being back here. So I want to thank everybody here for coming, all, all the students that helped. Anyway, thank you very much. The last inductee, Corey Weathers Sides, will be inter introduced excuse me, by Jim Weathers. The one thing that uh, has always been impossible to measure uh, in an athlete is heart. And uh, I want to give you an example of what heart is all about. Perhaps the hardest race to run in track is the 400 meters. It's a relatively long run, and it's run like a sprint. So it's very, very difficult to run that race. Perhaps the most difficult time in that race is rounding the last curve when there's 100 meters left. That is a defining moment in time for a runner. That's when your legs say no, that's when your mind says no. And the only thing that's left at that point is heart. Well, Corey has lots and lots of heart. Great athletes can't do things by themselves. Uh, Corey was really, really blessed at her time at Boswell to have outstanding coaching. Uh, she had coaching that uh, they committed time and effort and they motivated her and uh, they uh, worked with her. And without that coaching, she, she could not have ever reached her potential. What her mother and I really wanted was for Corey to turn out to be a good person. A person of character who others would emulate. So just as in athletics, as a wife and mother, and as a person, Corey, has overachieved. Of this, her mother and I are most proud. Thank you. Uh, once again, I'm follow following in my father's footsteps. <laughs> um, thank you all very much for uh, this banquet, and uh, it's so nice to see some uh, familiar faces that I haven't seen in 20 plus years, so um, it is an honor to be here. The next thing that sports has taught me is to sacrifice, lots of sacrifice, sometimes making choices for a greater purpose. 
And the last thing that um, sports has taught me is to be passionate. We've heard that word, I think, from almost every speaker in here, is be passionate. Dedicating your time to what matters most. Um, and success can often come from loving what you're doing. And if you don't love it anymore, sometimes it's time to walk away. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank God for giving me certain physical abilities that open doors for me. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Tammy Wilson, she's not here, uh, for giving me the golden key that's passed down to select athletes to the basketball gym. <laughs> I, la I later gave mine to Angela Stanford, and I later found out that everyone in Saginaw had a key. Sorry, Coach Hesse. <laughs> Uh, Coach Stepp, she and I have been friends for a long time now. I uh, had the opportunity <coughs> of working with her, uh, coaching with her back at Boswell for a short stint. But I'd like to thank you for nominating me to the Hall of Fame, uh, for dedicating your time to working with me and showing me that even an unlikely basketball bunch can rise above by believing in their leader who's often the coach. Um, I'd also like to thank you for teaching me that motivation is the primary role of a coach. And uh, did you know that head coach has two meanings? <laughs> I've used this wisdom in my own coaching endeavors and I also understand the bond you develop uh, with one's athletes. Uh, I'd also like to thank my sister Jamie for enduring uh, years of being called Corey's sister and wearing a t-shirt that said the same. <laughs> and now watching all of your achievements in uh, cycling, she's an amazing bicycle person. And uh, I'm Jamie's sister and I'm proud of you. And I guess I need a t-shirt too. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank my parents by teaching me not necessarily your words, but by your actions. Uh, my mom is one of my greatest fans, and she endured years of what we like to call bleacher butt. <laughs> I know she would have rather been in the air-conditioned basketball gym with hot metal bleachers at the track meets getting sunburned. And many summers she drove to Lubbock or to Abilene to pick up a team of girls from basketball camps and bring them home. Uh, she took me to early morning practices before I could even drive. Uh, she put up with the moodiness of a teenager and the finicky eating habits of a runner. And she also did the mountains of laundry and workout gear during those years. Can you come to my house? <laughs> and she did it all without complaining. I'd also like to thank my dad, who was my very first coach, uh, for always being present and my hero. Uh, he'd travel across the country to all of my track meets. Uh, my teammates at Tech knew him as uh, our team dad. I'm grateful that he had the ability to be present. Uh, he'd see us at Mount Sac in California or Drake Relays in Illinois. Um, he even squeezed in a marathon weekend of traveling to an indoor meet in Lubbock. Caught the college basketball game there that night. Flew home to my sister's high school game at Boswell. And then I think he flew off to the Super Bowl. <laughs> But most importantly, uh, for the dad of two girls, thank you for playing sports with me because I wouldn't be standing up here if it weren't for you. Um, finally, I want my children to know that it doesn't matter to me where your passion lies, whether it's sports, music, art, or science, or where you go to school, Grandma and Granddad, cover your ears. <laughs> but to create your own path in life, and to learn life's lessons through both success and failures. And with that said, I'd like to dedicate this award to my husband, Dusty, and my three children, Logan, Luke, and Gracie. You guys are my greatest achievement. Thank you very much.